This is where I want to go because I'm amazed. I'm just frankly amazed that everybody I've seen right on this subject acts like Romans chapter 8 doesn't exist. Romans chapter 8 and Colossians chapter 1 answers this question. And it's like, could someone please quote the Bible if we're talking about it? Now, at this point, you might be wondering, okay, if God created other life forms in the universe, would he love them? Would they be fallen? Could they do evil? If so, would God redeem them? Would he take them to heaven? Would he offer them a way of salvation? In Christian language, would Christ's death also be for their sin, or would he have to be incarnated and die and add infinitum number of times, like Thomas Paine was, was ridiculing? And that brings up the third issue of concern. A lot of people are worried that the notion of intelligent alien life undoes the doctrines of the incarnation of Christ and redemption. This is the way C.S. Lewis, a famous Christian author, put this. He said, if the universe is teeming with life, again, he's just stating the position. This, we are told, reduces to absurdity the Christian claim that to this one planet, God came down and was incarnate for us and our salvation. Paul Davies puts it this way, of all the world's major religions, Christianity is the most species-specific. Jesus Christ was humanity's savior and redeemer. He did not die for the dolphins or the gorillas, and certainly not for the proverbial little green men. But what of deeply spiritual aliens? Are they not to be saved? Are we to contemplate a universe that contains perhaps a trillion worlds of saintly beings in which the only beings eligible for salvation are the really bad ones on earth? I mean, this is how Davies you know, framed the question. Catholics and others, you know, see where this is going about this multiple incarnation thing, and that's what spooks them. Now, this alleged problem proceeds along a number of assumptions, all of which I believe are flawed. In Christian theology, all humans need to be redeemed to have their moral guilt before a holy God erased and forgiven. The mechanism for this is the sacrificial death of Christ on behalf of all humanity and, the, and his resurrection. Salvation cannot be merited, but is imparted to all those who put their faith in what Jesus did. This is the gospel. As such, Davies' comments in particular show a fundamental misunderstanding of the gospel, for one thing. But be that as it may, the assumption that E.T. needs a savior would have to be based on the prior assumption that E.T. was guilty before God. The guilt would in turn have to be incurred when and if E.T. failed a moral test, like the one put to Adam and Eve, in an event called the fall. Now, some thoughts for you. The fact that E.T. is intelligent has nothing to do with his need of salvation. Adam and Eve were intelligent creatures but did not need salvation until they sinned. E.T. would only need salvation if there was a fall for E.T. The Bible teaches that every human bears guilt before God. Since E.T. is not human, he is exempt without a fall. E.T. would not need a savior, and so that makes the question moot. I would like to say it makes the question silly. But nevertheless, it was a serious question within the church. Why would we assume God would test the ETs he created? He might, but this is not required. And God would not be forced to do this because he did it on earth. And if he did not test ET and ET was unfallen, the whole problem is moot. The fact that ET was a created being in God's grand creative output also does not mean that salvation is necessary. Animals don't need to be saved, yet they are part of the new heaven and the new earth at the time of the end. Angels are also intelligent created beings, and they are not included in the plan of salvation, according to the Bible. If there are aliens, they may also have been excluded from the plan of salvation. One would not need to conclude from this that they, like fallen angels, would be eternally punished. They might just die, and that's it. Now, on the other hand, and I, this is where I want to go, because I'm amazed, I'm just frankly amazed, that everybody I've seen right on this subject acts like Romans chapter 8 doesn't exist. Romans chapter 8 and Colossians chapter 1 answers this question. And it's like, could someone please quote the Bible if we're talking about it? ETs, on the other hand, would be included under the atonement of Christ, but not in a spiritual salvation sense. Here's how they would be included. They would be included with everything else in the created world, the created cosmos. Romans 8. Now listen to this as I read. Paul says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. Catch this. The creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of the corruption of the fall into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. Paul says because of what Christ did, the whole creation, every speck of the cosmos will be made new. And you are only excluded from that if you retain moral guilt 
before God. If you essentially thumb your nose at God's plan for you to participate at that time. And if the angels, if ETs, whatever, if they have never become morally guilty before God, they're in. They've got the ticket. And it's by God's design. Just read you Colossians 1. Same idea. I'm amazed that it's like nobody knows these passages are there. Colossians 1, Paul writing again, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and so desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, and that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him, to reconcile all things unto himself, by him whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, But one of the reasons that God came up with the plan of the incarnation and redemption was so that the entire cosmos, which he, through Christ, created, could be saved and redeemed. The only way you are not in that group is if you retain deliberately by your own choice your moral guilt before God. If you've never had moral guilt before God, if you've never fallen, and again, if E.T.'s out there and there's no fall out there on another planet, he's in. This is a totally irrelevant question. And I don't know why it has plagued the church for so long. 